Hello, fellow builders. Welcome back for another episode of the Family Builders Podcast. This is your host, Pastor David Moore, sweltering in the heartland of Oklahoma today at Lakeview Baptist Church in Newcastle, and joining me from an undisclosed secure location way up in the Northeast is Brother A.J. Harold. Brother Harold, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Is it really, really hot there? It feels like it'd be really hot there where you are. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know. It just, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust, but it's only hot on me, it seems like. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good. I enjoy summertime to a certain extent, but I am looking forward to autumn and uh, cooler temperatures. Of course, in uh, Oklahoma, autumn is not what it was in Wisconsin. I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, I, I love the winters here, but I miss the autumns in Wisconsin. You know, 50, 50 degree temperatures, college football, you know, corn maze and, and bonfires. And in Oklahoma, you just don't do any of those except for the college football. So uh, it's good to be here today talking about families. And I want to remind our listeners, go to our Facebook page, like it, uh, join the group and be part of the family discussion there. And also, if you have any questions or comments or would like to uh, uh, make comments about the episodes you've heard, feel free to uh, post those on Facebook or you can email them to us at uh, familybuilderspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we also have our website, familybuilderspodcast.com. You go to that website and listen to past episodes read about the hosts, and so forth. Uh, Brother Harold wanted to also remind our listeners, this is the time of year, not just of corn mazes and 50-degree temperatures in college football, but it's the end of summer, which means back to school. And if you're like my family, you uh, were not willing to entrust your children to the government propaganda in government-run schools, and for many people, the Christian schools are simply not an option, either because there's not one close by that uses the doctrine and teachings that we use in our church, or because it's simply not affordable. You can't, uh, can't afford to do it. Well, there's an option of homeschooling. And I want to remind our listeners about our sponsor, Midwest Christian Academy. Midwest Christian Academy is a full-service homeschool group that's accredited by the National Association of Private Schools. And they are affordable and convenient. They have curriculum from preschool all the way up to 12th grade. Uh, I can tell you of a certainty from firsthand experience that they are a great organization to work with. They provide a top quality education. And it's certainly something that is doable. You may think homeschooling could never be for you. But I would encourage you to talk to the people at Midwest Christian Academy. Go to MidwestChristianAcademy.com. And when you sign up, make sure you use the code BUILDERS in your referral line and receive a 50% discount on the first semester's registration fee. That's MidwestChristianAcademy.com. Use the code BUILDERS. All right, Brother Harold, as we get into this week's episode, and uh, we, I want to ask you, we'll start off today by asking you a question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's hear it. Okay. So it's a pretty simple question. And it's this. You have you have 12 kids ranging in age from about 4 up to 22, is that correct? 23. 23. 23. Okay, so 4 up to 23. But let me ask you this. Do you have any rules at your home for your kids? Yes, I do. Okay. Most people are probably thinking right now, that might be the dumbest question ever asked on a podcast. I must but I have a point to those people. <laughs> <laughs> Especially since I've been to your home, you've been to my home, and I know your family. You've got rules, right? Right. You know, if you were to meet the Harold family or any family that has rules, you would know pretty quickly what some of those rules are just by the behavior of children, but not just the children, by the behavior of the parents. Because, Brother Harold, you're, I know you're like us. You have rules for yourself and your wife as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah and, and so do my 
wife and I. The, we, we don't normally call them rules. They're just things that we do or things that we don't do. As a husband and wife, we have sat down and said, there are some things we will do. There are some things we won't do. Sometimes we won't do them because we just don't care about it, don't like it. Sometimes we won't do them because of a conviction of the Holy Spirit that it would be wrong to do those things. Uh, but but and some but when we do some things, you know, sometimes it's not a case of right or wrong. It's just a case of there's nothing wrong with this and we enjoy it, so we do it. Sometimes it's a case of we maybe don't enjoy this so much, but we know this is what God wants, and so we do it. So we have rules for ourselves, rules for our kids. Everybody has to have rules. Uh, you know, historically there have been adventurers who have tried to cross great oceans in very small vessels by themselves. And they didn't have GPS. They didn't have uh, short of uh, ship uh, um, radio communications. They just would, a guy would get in his little boat and would sail off into the waters. And, uh, you know, four or five, six months later, he'd show up on some other shoreline. And Brother Harold, what do you think was one of the typical attributes of a person who did that when they when they showed up on the other shoreline? What do you think that they, you think they were pretty normal and well adjusted? Uh, not at all. No, they needed some time to be adjusted. Ex- exactly. They were kind of loony. Uh, the, pardon the expression. They were crazy because they had spent so much time not just alone, but they had spent so much time in the vastness of the ocean and the sky with no visible horizon to break that up really. And so it, it, it was just too much for their mind to comprehend uh, in more, um, more, more close to home, if you will, in the American expansion across the continent, uh, people would leave uh, kind of the main starting point for wagon trains going West was Independence, Missouri. I don't know why Missouri, but that was kind of the main place. You know, you got to Independence and you went off uh, to to the West and they would get, you know, a day or two or three down the trail and people would start finding excuses to go back. Oh, uh, you know, I'm not feeling well. Oh, this is the, you know, it's hotter than I thought it would be. Or, oh, it's just, you know, it's, 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 it's more dangerous. There's not enough restaurants, so, you know, whatever. Uh, they would find excuses to go back. Why? Because just the vast openness was too much for many people. People needed the, the, the lines, if you will, of a civilized society. Well, our families are microcosms of civilized, of, of civil society. It's what, what God has given to us to to be the home that represents Christ and his love for the church. And so our families need to have guidelines, just like churches need to have rules and guidelines, and society needs to have rules and guidelines. Um, you know, what we have in society, there's a, a political movement called libertarianism, and there motto is that they have a secret plan to band together and leave everybody alone. Uh, and that's <laughs> uh, libertarianism kind of has the idea or proposes the idea. You do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. We're just not going to bother each other. Well, that's great, except for the natural inclination of humanity at some point is to what I want to do has to infringe on what you want to do, which means there has to be guidelines. There has to be rules. Uh, you know, it, it's funny, libertarianism back in the days before traffic control devices became common usage, when they first were introduced, uh, the libertarian, they, they wouldn't even call libertarianism at the time, but the, the mindset of libertarians was, you can't tell us what to do when we're driving. Uh, Brother Hale, if you ever, if you, you're, you're from LA, you've seen crazy drivers, but can you imagine what it was like? In the early 1900s, when there weren't speed limits, there wasn't car insurance, there was, you know, uh, I mean, if you just smashed into somebody, you two probably duked it out in the street to see who was going to pay for it. And even then, probably didn't end up paying for it, Uh, right? I mean, it was just, there wasn't rules. 
And so over time, those we said, hey, maybe we need to have rules. We got all these cars on the road. They're smashing into each other. You know, they nobody ever had to buy horse insurance before uh, in case they ran into some other guy's horse making a lane change illegally. Uh, right. They, <laughs> and, and so so we had to develop rules and guidelines as society changed. Well, families are at a point now where, where we cannot not have rules and guidelines. I'm going to take you to a verse in the book of Psalms, chapter 16, and verse 6. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. The psalmist here, speaking of lines, Brother Harold, and of course we want to take that in context. So I'm just going to read the first five verses as well. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee. But to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight, their sorrows shall be multiplied, that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. So we see here the psalmist stating, I'm going to put some rules in place for my family. I'm not going to follow after false gods like some others have. And then he says, the lines are fallen to me. These are rules and guidelines that have been passed down to him from preceding generations, from those who've gone before. And he says this, they fall to me in pleasant places. Brother Harold, you're a pastor, you're a dad, you make rules for things, for people. Uh, has anybody ever said, hey, thank you for these rules. They've taken me to pleasant places. Uh, I have not said them. I grew up in an environment where rules were everywhere. And now that I am in certain places, the authority, whether it's the home, the church, etc. Um, and I've never heard that said. But as you're talking about <laughs> rules, as you're talking about these things, I can't help. You gave a little bit of history because you're the history nerd. I'm the word nerd. Yep. And I couldn't <laughs> help. So you were ignoring my history lesson oh, while you looked no. up the word? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's fair. I'm going to take a nap while you do the work. No, I'm just yeah, yeah. No, it's quick, though. It's quick. The word rule, it means to govern. That's kind of a no brainer. But this part is what's amazing to me rule that is to stretch, strain, or make straight. And so as you begin to talk about rules and different things, Mm -hmm. I am mature enough at this stage of life to realize, well, I could say it this way. I've seen a little meme, a picture where a guy gets mad at another guy because there's a fence there. There's a standard, a right. rule. And he yells and he's like, I'll show you what, what I think about this fence. So he goes and runs and jumps over the fence. And while he's in the process of jumping over the fence, the friend yells out, that's not a fence. That's a guardrail. That's a cliff over there. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I'm trying mm -hmm. to prevent you from having fun. The rule is there <laughs> to make sure your walk is straight. It's pleasing to the Lord. And so bottom yeah. line is, though, it's not natural, Brother Moore. I kick against it. I still do right. at times. So how do we fix that? Where do we mm -hmm. go with this? Well, first of all, let me just you know point out in, in your illustration there of the, uh, the fence builder with the slow explanation. You know, probably most of the rulemaking we have to do can be better received if we start with the explanation. Wow. Yeah. You know, if he would have put a sign up on the fence that said, this fence is here for your protection because there's a cliff on the other side, there probably would never have been a problem. Now, there's still some. You know, I could tell you in my own family, I love my kids, but my kids are are sinners. <laughs> I know they are because they come from sinners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My wife is very much, no, I, 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 I know it's better. me. I'm the sinner. No, <laughs> my wife is perfect. No, uh, <clears throat> my, my kids, uh, every one of them struggled with rules at times. And I would explain to them why the rules were in place for their protection 
and they would still struggle. You know, they would want to say, well, I don't need that protection. You know, and and at that point, that's just where we're dealing with a rebellious spirit. You know, and we could do with that, except just turn it over to the Lord, let the Lord chasten them and convict them. And as we've shared before on different episodes of this program, you know, that has happened with not just with my kids, but with people throughout you know the country, other pastors and their kids and so forth. So so the idea here is the pleasant places. You know, and, and I think we need to look at the pleasant places before we can get to the answer of how we stop the 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 destruction that occurs when we just go jumping over the fence. And when you were talking about that, I, it brought to mind an experience when I was, uh, and I hate to go to the when I was a boy stage, uh, but when I was a boy, when I was a youngster, uh, about, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 years old, somewhere on there. My family, for some reason, got this idea we wanted to go camping. Now, we're not campers. You know, our idea, our idea of camping is staying in like a Best Western. Um, you know, we, we, <laughs> we don't, we're not outdoorsy people. Uh, we, we like going to the store and buying groceries, uh, cooking them in an oven uh, as opposed to a campfire. You know, we, we, we like air conditioning and indoor plumbing. Uh, that's, that's us. We don't like going out and roughing it, but for some reason this year we said we're going to, and even then we weren't really roughing it. We rented a 30 foot long Winnebago motorhome nice. and, uh, my, my, yeah, right. My five siblings and I, and let me tell you, 30 feet long sounds like a big motorhome until you put eight people in it. Yeah. I know that. that's, that's considerably less space than you would think. <laughs> uh, but, uh, we, we went to this campground in Southwestern Colorado just north of Durango. And uh, to get there from Chicago, where we lived, we had to traverse Western Illinois and then the state of Iowa and then the state of Nebraska. And we got to Colorado and we took a left and we went south uh, from Denver down to, uh, 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 I forget where, past Colorado Springs down to, I think it's Pueblo and, and across to, through Walsenburg and uh, west on the highway there through the Sangre de Cristos. And then you come to Wolf Creek Pass. Now, Wolf Creek Pass, I guess, was made famous back in like the 60s or 70s in some kind of a country western song about truck driving. <laughs> uh, but I could tell you what it was like in the early 80s. It was a highway going over the Rocky Mountains there in southwestern Colorado with incredibly beautiful scenery. But this highway was not well engineered. It had uh, two lanes, one lane in each direction, except for at places where it had maybe one and a half lanes, uh, where, you know, erosion had washed away part of the one of the lanes. And, and so you'd be driving and there's your lane and then there's the shoulder and then there's the guardrail and then there's a little bit of extra shoulder past the guardrail and then there's the cliff and you go down and you can see wolf creek down at the bottom of the of the valley there and uh then sometimes that little extra area would get kind of close to the guardrail and sometimes the guardrail would be gone and then sometimes the shoulder would be gone sometimes the little yellow line on the edge of the pavement would be gone i mean it was you know it, it was really kind of kind of scary there in some places and let me tell you when you're on that part where the road's real narrow and there's no shoulder and no guardrail you can see imminent destruction but when there's the shoulder and the guardrail you kind of breathe a little easier and say oh it's so much nicer here why because there's a line, there's a boundary there, there's a rule that keeps you from destruction. You know, we need to change the way in families and in churches that we look at rules and guidelines. They're not there to restrict, although they do restrict, they're there to keep you in a pleasant place. Look at our text in Psalm 16. If the psalmist would have said, hey, you know, all my friends are worshiping other gods, they're offering drink offerings to these other gods, and I just, you know, I just want to fit in with my friends, he would not have been in pleasant places in verse 6. He would have experienced God's judgment. You know, I'm Brother Harold, we've talked about this before, uh, reading a chapter a day, uh, a chapter in the morning, chapter at night, right when we first wake up, and we go to bed. Right now I'm in Ezekiel. And let me tell you something. I thought, 
Isaiah and Jeremiah and Lamentations were a downer. Ezekiel, man. I've read it before, but I'm I'm certainly renewed at just the revulsion God had developed for his own people because of their sin. The lines were there. The very same lines were in place. They could have been within them, but they chose to go outside of those lines and were destroyed. So before we get to your question, how do we stop ourselves from resisting the lines? Brother Harold, how do we see the destruction on the other side? Or how do we not see it? Especially because we have the Word of God. And I'm not just saying that because this is a Bible-believing Baptist podcast. We have people like Joshua. And one of my favorite youth sermons that I preach to teenagers is Joshua 24, but specifically verse 15, where Joshua's at the end of his life, and he says, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose. You just said choose, choose, choose. Joshua said the same thing. A lot of our families, we feel like we're discovering something new when God has given us the B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions for leaving earth, to study and show ourselves approved unto God, even as a family unit. So Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. And then he gives, you know, you could serve the devil or you could serve God. But he says this, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And this is what I like, Brother Moore, about that. He knew there was a line. He verbally drew the line. And then he said this, Mm -hmm. before you even let me know your decision, I'm letting you know, I've yeah. already made up my mind, we're going to serve the Lord. And so as families, Pastor Moore, I think we need to stop looking at, as far as us parents, we need to stop looking at our parents only, at our brothers and sisters only, the cousins, nephews, nieces only. You can look at good examples. We are like Paul, follow yes. me as I follow Christ. But we need to look in his word mm-hmm. again. Because here's the thing, for me, I don't know where to draw the line without the Bible. The government is trying to draw the line without the Bible. right? And so we kick against that. Oh, they're trying to restrict my freedom. Well, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the question is, am I where the Spirit of the Lord is? (laughs) Hmm. That's good. Yeah. You know, and I was thinking about this, too. Uh, Yeah, I used to umpire baseball. Uh, for little league up through college and, and before a baseball game, when the, you know, the people are out there warming up and stuff, they have people that go out and they draw the foul line. So you have home plate, everybody, everybody kind of knows what a baseball field looks like. You have a field and then you have at one corner, you have home plate and then going up to the right, uh, at about a 45 degree angle is first base and to the left at about a 45 degree angle is third base. And there's a white line from home plate to each of those bases. And then the line extends past the bases into the outfield straight away or straight at that same angle, rather, from home plate. Brother Harold, have you ever seen any of those fields that are are laid out by maybe a park worker or a coach who isn't really good at geometry (laughs) not baseball but i have football same idea yes (laughs) okay so so i as an umpire i would stand behind home plate and if a ball was hit in the air to the outfield i would have to position myself behind you know if it was hit out to to say right field i would have to position myself behind home plate so i could see home plate and the line to first base and the line passed it out to the to the outfield so I can see when the ball comes down, does it come down in foul territory or in fair? But Brother Harold, when you have a serpentine line <laughs> with more 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 switchbacks than Wolf Creek Pass, as I talked about a while ago, it's a little hard sometimes to tell if a ball is fair or foul. Wow. You know, I tell you something, parents, if you don't get anything else from this today, get this. Make your lines straight. It's good. How do we make a straight line, Brother Harold? You got to have something to measure against. Yep. You know, the Bible is a nice straight edge yeah. for making a straight line. It's good. 
you make your straight edge society, that line's going to have more switchbacks than Wolf Creek Pass. Yeah. You make your straight edge what other people do, and as they change, you'll change. But you make your straight edge the Bible, and you will be consistent, and consistency breeds success in our children and in our families. It's true. If you think about it, whatever, the love of money is the root of all evil. There are issues that our government pushes, not so much because of the issues alone, in my opinion, it's the money. So if the issues change because there's more money in the other side, they'll switch sides in a minute because money yep. is the goal. What doesn't change is Jesus. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. His word is forever settled in heaven. And what does change, Dad, I'm going to talk to you for a minute, is your emotions. Your feelings change. But the facts, yeah. the truth doesn't change. Sometimes, honestly, Brother Moore, I feel on top of the world. I'm married. I look at my wife. I look at my children. I look in the moment and I'm just like, it cannot get any better than this. But to be honest, there are plenty of times where I'm hoping, I hope, it doesn't get any worse than this. <laughs> and so our feelings can betray us. But the truth remains. And in order to make a straight line, we know one of the things, as you just mentioned, the target, if Jesus, the word of God is the target, and we keep looking unto Jesus, Hebrews 12, then we're going to have a pretty straight line. I say pretty straight because we're flesh. We're going to trip from time to time. Right. But yeah, I have seen some crazy looking. They're supposed to be pretty much <laughs> rectangle football fields. And I'm going, yeah. is that a rhombus? What is that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so straight lines are a blessing. Ah, yes, the famous trapezoidal football field. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, folks, thanks for joining us on today's geog uh, geometry lesson. We appreciate you. <laughs> I hope that uh, today's discussion has been a, a help to our families that listen. And I just want to add this. This is a personal note. This is not uh, Family Builders podcast official stance. This is my official stance. You know, we're talking about uh, government changing positions, Brother Harold, based on where money is. Um, <clears throat> in Florida right now, there is a proposition to amend the state constitution. There's two of them. One is, uh, and I don't know which one is which, but I think it's um, uh, question three and question four, or amendment three, and amendment four, something like that. One of them is to legalize the sale of marijuana in Florida. And they always use the argument, well, it'll bring in all of this tax money and uh, it'll make a, a, you know, a, a windfall for the state lowering property taxes. I could tell you unequivocally, that is a bald faced lie because it does not bring in a windfall of taxes. Do you know why? Because marijuana is still illegal federally, which means you cannot bank and report those cash proceeds for the sale of marijuana, even if it's quote unquote legal in your state, which means it's really not taxable. And what happens is there is a much greater societal cost than there is any local municipality sales tax or anything gain. And I can say that because I live in a state that foolishly voted to legalize marijuana back before I ever moved here. And I'm telling you, the just if for nothing else, the stench statewide of all of the marijuana places is unbelievable. Brother Harold, you've driven through our state. You've said, wow, you guys have a lot of skunks here. No, we have marijuana here. Yeah. So I would just encourage any listeners that are in Florida vote no on the proposition to legalize marijuana. The other one is a proposition that would remove parental notification rules and would allow abortions up until birth in the state of Florida. And inexplicably, some of the politicians from Florida have run and hid from this thing and are hiding behind the, the little you know, wimpy excuse of, oh, well, that's a state issue. I'm a federal politician. You're a citizen of that state. If you can't speak on a state issue, you shouldn't be in office as a dog catcher. 
So let me encourage you, if you live in the state of Florida, vote no on the abortion amendment and no on the marijuana amendment. Draw a straight line, a consistent line for your kids. I don't care what wealth is promised you. Draw that straight line. That's just personal for me. I just I wanted to add that on there this week. But Brother Harold, thank you for being part of our episode this week. As always, I appreciate taking the time. You're speaking at special meetings in another place. I know you're very busy, and so thank you for joining us, and thank you for our listeners as well. Brother Harold, if you got anything to say before we go, you can say it, and then we'll close out. Oh, I'm just thankful for you listeners. I'm thankful for Pastor Moore, and I want to encourage you this way. Pastor Moore has become a friend because we communicate. You fathers out there, you mothers Amen. too, but you fathers out there, go find yourself a father who's striving for the mastery. Get some help. It's it's such a blessing and an encouragement that way. Amen. Amen, Brother Harold. That's great. Thank you all for listening. That's all for this week. Brother Harold, take us out.